Thank you for listening to RGCWV, Random Geek Culture in West Virginia. I am your host, Lou Kersey. I don't know why I'm actually being so much like a, a Three Ring Circus guy. What do you call those? This is, uh, yeah. the, 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 oh... Uh, ring master, ring master, usual ring thing. master. I guess you'd call it. And with me tonight is Alex McLean and Greg Phillips. And uh, so, how are you guys doing tonight? Not too bad. I'm gonna have to be extra dour to to offset Luke's. <laughs> mm, so I'm not doing very good. Uh, I apparent, no. Apparently, apparently, uh, Sunbees had the uh, word of the day toilet paper. Uh, dower is the word of the day. So uh, thanks for that, Alex. So uh, <laughs> um, tonight... I'm not happy about it. <laughs> so tonight we are talking about the recent streaming shows that have been on um that have been a little bit polarizing one is that i wanted to talk about is uh, rings of power i wanted to talk about the house of the dragon which i haven't watched but greg and alex have both watched is that correct okay yeah um and andor which i i've watched i don't know greg have you watched any of andor just a few first episodes. Okay, all right. And I have a lot of friends that have really enjoyed that show. So, you know, I am I want to talk about it. And then, of course, I, I also watch She-Hulk. I don't think either Alex or Greg have watched She-Hulk, correct? Okay, yeah. Nope. And I, that that is one that I also want to talk about because that's also one that's a little polarizing. Um, but... <coughs> It's 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 something that I, I there there's there's a couple issues that I have with with these. So um, anyway anyway, um, was there one that you guys wanted to start off with? Pick one. I, we were also going to talk about Lord of the Rings, weren't we? Yeah, Rings of Power. That that was the Rings first one I brought. That was oh, the first okay. one I brought up. That was the first one I brought up. Well, I wasn't listening. <laughs> Well, I mean that that doesn't really yeah. That doesn't really surprise me, Alex at all. Um you know uh be, take your pick. Okay. Um I I, I kind of want to start this off with talking about Rings of Power. <sighs> um you know, Greg, have you watched Rings of Power? I watched all of it. Okay. Um I know what Alex thinks about it. What did you think about it? Well, I enjoyed it. Okay. Um, I do know that there were a lot of people who weren't very happy with it. Um, I think the biggest problem was they only had the rights to appendices. So they made a bunch of stuff up to fill in gaps. And that's where a lot of people, because um, some people are very, very picky about their Tolkienism, that that's where a lot of the unhappiness comes from is uh, the fill in the blanks they did because they had a lot of blanks they filled. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, and and I think that's where I am too. Overall, I enjoyed it. Um, I can definitely see where there are some points of contention yes. for this. But I also... Uh, in my opinion, a bad, a bad Tolkien movie or a bad Tolkien show, a bad Tolkien property is still a Tolkien property, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, but I, okay, there there are a few few things that I I, I can see that people had an issue with. One thing that I, I really, really had a problem with was how how it was finished out with who I was hoping it wasn't going to be. It was. Um, and I'm talking about The Stranger. And it kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense 
of 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 who it essentially who it is without saying who it is um because in the show they didn't say who it was but he said his you know, line i don't want to i don't want to put any spoilers in the podcast because if you're listening to it i want you to watch it right i want to encourage people to watch it right and uh it, revealing the spoilers might uh you know reduce that yeah and then that's why i'm trying i'm i'm trying to be trying to be mm-hmm. vague i'm trying is that is it coming across am i being vague enough yeah i think so I think so okay but in the other respect too there are some decisions that they made in the script as far as i don't want to say it's a twist with without making spoilers but man some of the things that i thought that they were going to go in they went in and i'm glad that they did especially for me as a as a fan of the series because i was literally like no they're not doing that they're not doing that no and they're even they even told me they're not going to do it like in the show they said they're not going to do it this isn't this isn't this isn't the dude I, I I'm I'm trying really really hard, really hard. <laughs> I know I know, but um, I mean all I have to say is for a, for a Tolkien fan, I, I and I'm a Tolkien fan. I, I wouldn't even say I'm an Edge Tolkien fan. I'm a big Tolkien fan, and I I enjoyed it. I think I, I hate to I hate to call out some 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 groups. But I almost feel like some people are getting offended not by actual conviction, but by proximity of someone who does have conviction. They heard from some YouTuber that this is horrible and they've ruined the lore and they didn't actually read the books. And it's like read the books and make up your own mind right i really have to wonder a lot of these critics oh they're destroying the lore you know I, how many of y'all read the Simmer- silmarillion like I, I any mean, of I these did. critics how many of y'all read that you know I, I i'm not talking to you guys i'm talking to the imaginary uh film youtube film critics which by the way greg did you, know. you did you read the silmarillion only part of it. I have never finished all of Tolkien. Oh, <laughs> uh, I've never finished. Uh, what's the What's the unwritten tales? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, I've, tales. Uh, I, I've always wanted to, but uh, I've never I've never actually sat down and listened listened to it because I I'm, I'm I listen to my books. I don't read them. I'm a lazy reader. Oh. I loved it. I loved every episode. I loved every character, and I loved everything about it. Like I, I really find little to criticize in the show. It's I think it's great, and yes, yes, I'm I'm a big lore nerd. <laughs> I've read the Silmarillion and the wikis and all all these things, and yes, 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 they they are taking a lot of liberties with the lore, but I don't care. I don't care, and you know they're they're telling a good story now. If I wanted the the book read to me i would listen into an audiobook and it, even for that matter with like changing the story and changing the characters you know people getting all mad about that i hope they haven't watched the peter jackson films cuz they would hate them that's my <laughs> point you know that's my so the peter jackson films change the lore more than this show but yeah. you know what the Peter Jackson films are known as one of the greatest book adaptations ever made. Mm-hmm. And you know why? And- because he took the liberties that needed to be taken. Mm-hmm. He changed some parts of the story that just wouldn't have transferred right to theater. I, I do think that's in so- something people need to realize is that book and cinema or TV, they don't always line up and you have to do some creativity i i don't know if 
some of Tolkien's works, if you just try to make them straight without any adaptation whatsoever, how they would really translate to live action, mm-hmm. you, you almost have to adapt them. S- some people would have checked out in the Lord of the Rings movies if they had spent a half hour looking for another white tree. Because <laughs> there was literally a chapter of the book which would have equated to like a half hour of the book of them looking for a white tree to plant back in the city. Like, that just wouldn't have transferred right. It just wouldn't. I mean, perfect example. Okay, I'm going to go on a soapbox here. I'm gonna go. I have a soapbox too. Okay, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a, th- I'm gonna go on a thing. Sorry. If Greg. they hadn't have changed the Watchmen film, which I like the Watchmen film and I loved the graphic novel, if they hadn't have changed the Watchmen film to where Doctor Manhattan, Doctor Manhattan, Mister Manhattan, Doctor Manhattan, I think he's. I think he's got his degree. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Manhattan hadn't destroyed the city with a nuclear bomb versus a giant octopus. A giant octopus destroying the city just would not have worked in theater. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad they made that change. A lot of people didn't like that they made that change. But I'm glad that they did. Now, Alex, you go on your soapbox. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's something, if you've watched the show before, it's something that I've, I'm have i kind of on about. It's, it's my crusade. Uh, about media hate. Just un, unnecessary media hate. It seems like everything, everything these days is like hated, widely criticized online and, and everything. And of course, we know why hate gets views. You know, hate gets views. But I truly, truly, the I do believe if the Peter Jackson films were to come out today, if Fellowship were to come out today, I do believe it would be so hated by by film critics and YouTube people and 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 whatnot, uh, I think it would be so hated that they would not make a second one. I think that movie would be an absolute failure if it was made today, because of everybody hates everything. And, and I you don't know, know, you know what? Is it not cool to like things anymore? And and that is actually, um, I, I think that's a credit to Denis Villeneuve. I'm, I think I'm pronouncing his na- name right. Um, mm-hmm. That the fact that the second Dune movie is getting made is is really not even surprising. It's just I think it's a credit to his his directorial ability, um, mm-hmm. and all of the actors too. I mean, everybody in that in the Dune movie was just fantastic. And I'm a I'm a huge Dune fan, but that's another good adaptation. Um, that I, I think I, yeah, yeah. I think, I think you under you guys understand what I'm saying and I think I'm right, transferring right. it right. But yeah, I, I really wish just everything just settle down, settle down and just watch the stupid thing. Yeah. I don't know. Now I, I agree. You, you almost <laughs> fully appreciate that show. I think you have to see it. I think you need to see the whole show mm-hmm. to fully judge it. Now, there's one thing that I was talking to Alex about, and I'm going to bring this up um, right right now. One of the reasons why some people are hating on this, uh, on the Rings of Power movie or show, is the same reason why I'm kind of didn't like Andor. Is it, it just sometimes they they t- in rings of power they took forever to get there they took it's forever perfect. to get there they they spent too much time in numenor they t- spent too much time here in there in the other place and and here here here's my here's my point what we're watching for rings of power is the lord of the rings extended edition I loved the extended edition, but that's because I'm a huge fan. 
So that means I'm loving every single second of it because I loved every single second of the extended edition. But it's not for everybody. For some people, it's just the theatrical. And and, and we're going to harp back to this point several times in the podcast. Sometimes some things shouldn't be a full show and should be condensed down to uh, to a movie. But it doesn't seem like movies are coming out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Make it just pretty... when's the last time a movie came out that didn't get destroyed i mean yeah there was spider-man spider-man was good everybody likes spider-man but then like the doctor strange movie who liked that i'm not hearing um, anybody ch chime up you know i uh i i do i understand why you'd think that way luke mm -hmm. that uh, uh some things ran slow I kind of feel like, and there are things they absolutely could have compressed. Yeah. Agreed. There are things that they could have cut and compressed and trimmed down and made it run faster. But then sometimes I don't like it whenever a show just jump cuts to the next thing. They just, they, you know, they never show the characters just, you know, existing. Yeah. Just being. And, uh, you know, sometimes it can run too fast. And, to in your face and that's that's fine and i i totally get what you're yeah. you're saying and yeah, and i don't yeah, there i don't are parts that they can trim i agree with you but i'm saying mm -hmm. I, i'm trying to bring this down to somebody else that's <laughs> watching this and right. going okay well this is this this needs to they need to bring this back because if i'm thinking about that about another show i know that somebody's thinking about that about my show mm -hmm. so yeah, I see that. So I'm just trying to I'm try, trying to relate. I'm trying to trying to see from all angles. Okay. Can we move on from Yeah. Can we move on from Rings of Power? Let's talk about House of the Dragon. Um so I haven't watched it. So what have you guys go? If you want oh. to, you can rock paper scissors Greg, for go it. Ahead. <laughs> um I really enjoyed it. I know not everyone did. But for me, it was more reminiscent of when Game of Thrones was better. Not like Game of Thrones at the end, but Game of Thrones towards the beginning. Um, I really liked it. Um, everyone has their opinion. I'm not seeing some of the reasons for the hate. Like, I'm not, I'm not seeing them. But um, I had a really good time watching myself. There were some parts, just like with... Um, rings of power that maybe could have been sped up a little that were a little drawn out um and i one thing that i know some people have a hard time with is constant time jumping some people don't like constant time jumping um but overall i i had a good time yeah, I uh, similar thoughts. Similar thoughts that uh, sometimes it could be confusing as to like where they are, when they are, and you know what what's the significance of this and that. Um, you know, things I liked, things I didn't. It uh, it is a much lower fantasy kind of story. That there is no witches and warlocks and magic and zombies and, and none of that stuff. Uh, is there dragons in this? Yeah, there there are dragons. It's called House of the Dragon, and there are, there are lots of dragons. Okay, so you They're know, really about the only is, fantasy part. <laughs> yeah, they they really are the only fan. Like this is a very low fantasy story. It's mostly the political intrigue of yeah. Game of Thrones. Well, that's and, one of the best uh, parts part of, of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Right. Right. I I don't know. I just kind of miss a lot of the colorful characters. Hodor and uh and the Peter Dinklage what is his, what is his character? Tyrion Lannister and you know, and Ned Stark. Those are a big, bombastic, exciting characters. And I think this show doesn't have any of those. It doesn't have as many relatable characters. In fact, it has a lot of characters you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I don't think you're supposed to like them, though, but... Right. Right. No, everybody's bastards. Like, that's... <laughs> um, that said, and to Greg's point, yeah, it's like Game of Thrones is back on. 
Like it does, it gives me the same feeling as I did watching the first season of Game of Thrones. Like it, it's like going back, and that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Now, can you guys like relate this to you know what some, some people are you know saying about it? You know that it's not this or it's not that. Like, can you see, you know, why some people are having a hard time with the show? Not like I could for Rings of Power. Like, I didn't agree with some people's criticism of Rings of Power, but I at least understood it. I'm not understanding a lot of the hate for House of Dragon. I'm just, I'm not seeing it. I have not, I'm not, other than, again, you know, everyone's a terrible person and there's not really a whole lot of people to like. Maybe that's a problem for some people is they don't have a character to cling to <laughs> or the time jumping. Some people just can't deal with time jumping. Okay. But overall, there, I'm not seeing, I'm seeing what a lot of people are seeing. There is no really clear good versus evil of this story that whereas in game of Thrones, of course there are ice zombies. They're just a, an existential threat. Th that's a good versus evil story. This doesn't really have that, and it's all shades of gray, and everybody's bad, but everybody has a reason for being bad, and sometimes that can get tiresome. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I can I, I can get on board with that. All right. Um, so the next one that I want to talk about, I kind of have a problem with. I, I'm... I've been put I've been putting I've been putting it up. I don't get it. I don't get Andor. And I don't know if it's because it's a bad show or if because it's not for me. But I think that even some shows that aren't for me, if they're good shows, doesn't matter. It should I should enjoy it. You know, there are some there are some shows that just transcend a genre. You know, and I'm not saying that everything has to be S rank. You know, I, I don't think that everything has to be that tier of of, of excellent. But I have a problem with Andor. <laughs> I do. I do. I have a problem with that show. I've watched it. I've watched the whole thing up to the current episode. There's one episode left. There's one episode left, I think. I think. I think it's I think there's nine episodes to the season. And I just when you have a Star Wars property that has three episodes of camping. I have a hard time getting on board with that as a Star Wars property. When I have when you have 3 episodes of no Cassie and I'm not going to help you, you're a scumbag. <laughs> How is that a sh If it if it was a Star Wars movie, then that would be like 10 minutes. I think one of the things that I have the most problem with, with Andor, cause, okay, well, you know, I'll go, I'll go back to that, um, to what I was just thinking. I just feel like it's lazy writing. I do. I think that's the biggest problem that I have with, with the show, is I feel like it's lazy writing. Instead of first scene of Mandalorian, first scene of Mandalorian, you set up what is the entire show in one scene, in one scene, Mandalorian walks into the bar, he tells the guy I can bring you in warm or I can bring you in cold, you know he's a merciless mercenary, bounty hunter, but he has compassion. But like you said, they say so much 
in that and is one scene. And capable of delivering on these things. That's the other part. He is very capable of doing all these things. Because what did he do to that one guy that tried to kill him in that scene? <laughs> he shut the door on him by shooting it with his blaster and cut his head off. Yeah. So no, that show has a hook. That show, I mean, scene one is like, okay, sold. I will watch as many episodes of this as you'll make. But then you have three <laughs> episodes of Cassian Andor camping with people up in the hills. Granted, planning a heist. Ocean's Eleven. They plan the heist for, what, 20 minutes? And then they have the heist. In Andor, they plan the heist for three episodes, and then they have the episode in one. What did they do in Ocean's Eleven? <laughs> they planned the heist for like 20, 30 minutes, and then they spent another 20, 30 minutes... On the exciting part. Yeah, I uh, I don't I didn't think Andor was bad. I, I've watched the first three episodes, and I I really didn't dislike them. I just was really bored. I yeah. don't know. It was boring. It was a boring show. Yeah, I actually fell asleep in the third episode. Like, and I had to watch the second half of it over again. I don't know. I, I, I feel the same way. I'm not hating it, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, what just happened? I was looking at my phone because I don't care. <laughs> like, I, and I want to care because I like the character. I love things that take place in that time period between episode three and four. I like I like that time period. Um, I, we get to see the female. Yeah, what, what's her name on Mothma? We get to see her. Like I want to, I want to like this show, but I'm really bored at the beginning because I'm still in the, f the first three episodes and I'm bored. Guess who's? I don't in hate it, but I'm not. I'm used to watching a Star Wars property, even a cartoon, and being highly entertained. Guess who's in this? Guess who? Guess what Star Wars character is in this? Oh no, who is it? Leia. She's in Leia's it? in this. Wait a minute, really? Leia's in this. And she is an what? antique store clerk. What? I don't understand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> cameos aside. Um, <laughs> no, uh, um, and, and, it may, and it explains why she's there. But she doesn't do anything exciting. In fact, she does some things that are kind of outside of character. Really? Because even in Ob One, the little girl was still in character. It's fantastic. She and she was amazing. <laughs> and you know what? Ob One. Let's let's real talk. Ob One was slow in parts. It was slow in. It parts. was. It wasn't. It was slow in parts. But what's one of the things that it did? It showed a cyberpunk world that you know exists in Star Wars that we've never really gotten to see before. It showed a very, like, low-class but technologically advanced society in the, those first few episodes. When he was looking for, for looking for Leia, that was exciting. That was fantastic. That was showing yeah. me something that I haven't seen before. In Andor, it shows me a jail that I haven't seen before. I, you know, and I, I really didn't need to know Andor that Andor was good in theory. Like the uh, the premise sounds like it has a lot of potential. This, you know, smuggler, scoundrel, a Han Solo type of guy. That, oh, don't uh, even, well, don't even go there. Don't even <laughs> call him an, a, a Han Solo type. You know, um, I, I am. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I, now the juxtaposition though is with 
the praise that I see this show getting, I just I just don't understand what other people see in this. Um, but I I hear everywhere from the internet and even you know personal friends, people I work with are like, oh my god, Andor is the best show that they have done ever. Like, you thought The Mandalorian was good? This is, like, twice as good as The Mandalorian. I cannot believe... I, my mind is blown at this freaking show. And I'm... Really? In, I fell asleep. In what do people say is the great thing about that show when you ask them? <laughs> the sets. The sets are so amazing. The costumes, the design, the worlds, you know, the backgrounds and stuff. I, I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot too, and that's and not something. And I don't, I don't, don't disagree di- either. I don't disagree either. Yeah, I mm-hmm. don't disagree. In fact, that's the one thing that I would say is a credit to this show. It's practical effects. It's getting Star Wars back to what it used to be, which is practical effects. But the Mandalorian did that too. Hmm. And I I just don't understand where people were coming from when they when they say this is really exciting. They're gripped. They're glued to the the you know everything's everything's great. I, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't see what other people see in this. And then, and then maybe that's what fine. Maybe that maybe that's just us. Maybe that's just yeah. us. But that maybe the show's not for us. But I just I don't I don't see it. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I would like for this to do is for it to be condensed down to a, a prequel movie. But the thing is, is it's a prequel to a prequel. Do I really need that? Rogue One. It made sense. I I understand why they needed to make that. That's fine. Why did they need to make this show? I don't. I just don't understand. Well, I. There is one cool thing about this. Okay, so I told you that Leia was in it. Guess who else is in it? Salacious Crumb. Salacious B. Crumb is. He, I. I hope he's in it. I don't think he's in it. Okay. Saul Guerrero. Oh, Saul oh I did know that he was supposed to be in it, but I haven't made oh. it far enough. Forrest Whitaker. Saul Guerrero. Ooh. And it's the best CGI recreation that I've ever seen in a piece of media. Because mm. the late Forrest Whitaker... Uh, the, apparently there's some kind of deal with his estate that they're allowing him to be in the show that Disney's allowed to use him indefinitely and and that's okay and they did great with it and they did the kind of stuff the kind of mannerisms that made Forrest Whitaker really well known. And I think that his family estate will watch this show and go, yeah, it feels like he's alive again. It feels like he's, he's, you know, around again. And I really, I really, I like that. I can see his family members watching that and going, I really like what they did with him. That's, that's fine. And Man, that's the future, isn't it? We're, yeah. we're going to have good actors in movies now. Did you hear that Bruce Willis is now the first actor to sell his likeness to a deep fake company so that they can actually put him in whatever they want? <laughs> okay. I mean, Bruce Willis is suffering from Parkinson's, I think it is. He's suffering from oh, some no. some disease, which is he he can't do movies anymore. Yeah. So I mean, good for him. Good for him. I just uh, yeah. I future weird man. Yeah, future's weird man. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, Greg, what did you think of Andor? Were you, you similarly? I, is is I, it the best Star Wars thing they've made since A New Hope? I have. I'm still very early into it. I think I need to watch more before I can say. But right now, it's slow and boring. It's not so boring that I don't like it. I don't dislike it, but I'm not hooked yet. I'm still going to watch it because I pretty much, if, if it's Star Wars or Marvel, I'll end up watching it eventually. But right. um, I, I'm not, I'm not seeing it yet. I know some people thought it was grittier than most Star Wars. Agreed. Um, so maybe that's why some people are liking it because Star Wars um, tends to keep it toned down. You know, no blood, no cussing. And I guess they started to break some of those rules. They even cussed in the show, and that was a big deal to some people. Oh gosh. Um. Yeah. So I don't know if that's why some people like it. It's because it's a little grittier. Um. I don't know. I I need more time with it to make a final call. But right now, I'm not hooked, and I wanted to be. I wanted it to be like because I didn't go into it till recently, so I'd heard the good things. And, I love things from the time period of the early Empire, early Rebellion, and I wanted to, like, jump into it and just love it, but I, it's not happening yet. Yeah. I love the setting. I do. I, I, I love the setting and the set pieces. Um, I, I love... I lo I'm... Cats off to the set design. Um, there's something that I talked to you alex about and i'm gonna bring this up here there's one thing that really is missing from this john williams john yeah, john williams yeah. and i don't even know if he did the score for mandalorian i don't I, I don't think he did but gosh Gosh, the soundtrack for Mandalorian was fantastic. The score was fantastic. It felt like John Williams was there. I, I got to look that up. I got to mm. look it up and see if John Williams was uh, was part of the Mandalorian or at least set up some of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, man, you know it's the Mandalorian when that th when that theme comes on. <laughs> but. <laughs> in, in 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 that one that one hit the whenever the mandalorian comes on you know every every character has that you know little 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 audio cue. Little audio cue yeah thank you alex and that his audio cue is so western <laughs> oh, it's yeah. so fantastic <laughs> i know um, you know, the other thing I would say I like about Andor is, um, uh, I like seeing the lower level empire that like, usually when we see the empire, it is, you know, Lord Vader and designing the Death Star and all that stuff. You it know, gets the big evil overlords, but this is about the security gate dudes. You um, <laughs> if you, if you like that. It gets, it gets better. Worse. Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. Even, there there is literally a part. There's literally, literally a, a part in in the story that is a guy looking at Excel spreadsheets, like that's his job. <laughs> and there's a scene that's about that, yeah. and I'm like, right. how? You know, like but, these are the Empire's rent-a-cops. You know? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I can understand why why they they're, they're showing. I mean, it's just like you said, Alex. They're showing parts of the empire that you know we didn't mm. see before, and that's yeah, like cool. It. That's cool. That's cool. I just uh, I'm gonna get back to this again. I just think it could be condensed, but in the same respect, some people would say that same thing about Rings of Power. So, some people. I feel like I'm watching Andor Extended Edition, and I didn't like the theatrical. <laughs> so, all right. Moving on, moving on, moving yeah. on. Last po last topics, last topics, last. Okay. Last thing I wanted to talk about, 
and this is another polarizing streaming show and i don't think that alex or greg has watched this yet right no no okay nope. no i haven't seen it she hulk i was putting it off putting it off putting it off putting it off people were saying it was horrible it was horrible it was horrible it was horrible so i believed them and then i watched it and i could not get enough of that show and there's a reason why i'm a dad i'm a dad of a girl and there are too many okay let me let me tell you a story let me tell you a story I showed Bella when she was like five the animated Hobbit and she loved it. It was a proud Papa moment. It was a proud Papa moment. She loved the animated Hobbit. But when we got done, you know what she said to me? C can you guess? Did they make any more of these? where are all the girls think about that movie there is one girl in that whole movie i mean yes representation matters for a lot of things you know I, I, it's important now think about some of the other not even superhero but some of the other heroin movies. I'm not talking about train spotting. Um, <laughs> little joke in there. Um, with female movies with female leads. How many of those was it where the girl overcame the adversity by acting like a boy? yeah right this show does something that i never thought i'd see in the mcu because the mcu is mostly a boys club this show shows a girl overcoming her adversity by being a girl being a strong-willed female woman. <laughs> you laugh, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. When I say female woman. Mm -hmm. Instead of a girl acting like, uh, you know, eh, 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 you know, overcoming because she's acting like a boy. She's overcoming because she's being a strong-willed woman. And that's the kind of thing that I wanted. Uh, I want Bella to be able to look to. Not only that, not only that, but Bella's also big into CrossFit right now. She's a CrossFitter. She can deadlift. I think it was 180 pounds now. Bella can? Yeah! Oh, yeah! Geez. Yeah, she's... She's creeping is... up. She's creeping up uh, uh, on on uh, all I could do was bench press. And she hasn't focused specifically on bench pressing, but I am fully confident that at one point she will surpass my 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 bench press ceiling. So, yeah, uh, that's a good bit. Yeah, and <laughs> and so and, and okay, so one of the things that um they kind of that that people actually kind of had a hard time with was the fact that she just got her hulk powers and she was being a better hulk than hulk but they actually explain it in the show and in the comics and that's the thing that that uh, i i don't feel like a lot of people really really get she says in the show i've been dealing with anger my whole life 
because that's what part uh, it's part of being a woman is is dealing with emotional levels going up and down and everything and if if you don't if you don't manage that then you're a bitch I don't know if she used those words exactly in the show, but that's my point. But that's my point. It is 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 they're they're bringing this to an actual level that I never thought the MCU would do. They're actually trying to portray an, a, another side that hasn't even been touched on. Another thing that was really cool is towards the end it actually called out the Marvel formula and makes fun of it, which is hero faces villain with the same power set, CGI fight. It makes fun of it. <laughs> and the way they did it was fantastic. Like, it's almost worth just watching the show just for that last episode to see it make fun of the Marvel formula. <coughs> also, little spoiler, little spoiler, but not that, but uh, not that much. This is the first official MCU mention of X Men. Yeah. Oh. And they didn't do it in the way that you think. <laughs> Uh, is yeah. I I I wouldn't even suggest that every 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 boy watch this, because you it, you know how sometimes we talk about that it's not for us. I don't think I would get this show if I wasn't a dad to a daughter. You know, not as well as I did. At least let's say that, not as well as I did. But I I think that every every young girl should probably watch this. Every mom should watch this. You know, this is a this is a good show. This is a good show. I mean, from the opinion of a dad. I mean, because maybe maybe a girl will watch this and be like, oh, this is crap. You know, they're not doing doing it right. But from my opinion, I think they did a good a good job. They're at least trying. Let's say that they're trying. Um, I've I've heard from a lot of people saying that this show is hot garbage, and to that I might say that this show wasn't for you. Now, getting back to what we were talking about before, though, about streaming shows, they could have condensed this down to a movie. They could have condensed this down to one thing. However, there was a lot of episodes. You might even want to call them fluff episodes, but they were some several episodes that could have been cut. But I'm glad they didn't. So, yeah, it's 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 whatever. It's whatever. Um, and I think that's the cap of this entire episode is maybe not everything should be turned into a show. There are certain things that should be turned into movies and left there. I mean, I loved the Batman. I liked it a lot. And I'm talking about the Batman movie that just came out, uh, Robert Patterson. Um, yeah. I liked that a lot. But they're also making a show about the GCPD in in in, in the Penguin and everything. And I just I don't know if it needs to be made. I I mean maybe it's going to be great. Maybe it's going to be fantastic. But. I think that these streaming companies need to take a better look at if it actually needs to be a show or if it needs to be a movie. But the problem is, is that in our current media generation right now, 
if you make a show that keeps people hooked on the streaming platform, they're gonna stay subscribed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we are right now. Movies are not making as much money. It's it's also why we've went from uh, the old formula, which Netflix still does, of just dump the whole show at one time. To oh no, let's make let's do it once a week because now you have to subscribe for two and a half months to watch the whole show. And I don't necessarily hate that, but I don't always love it either. I hate it either. No, I mean I didn't mind it with Mandalorian when they did that with Mandalorian. Because it was like, oh, okay, I know what I'm doing on a Friday. That the new Mandalorian comes out, me, Cassie, and Bella are gonna sit down and we're gonna watch the new Mandalorian over pizza. You know, it's not. I, I didn't hate that, but not every show needs to do that. So no. There's so, there's they, some new shows that come out that I'd like to binge. I agree. So. So. Um, so, uh, based on my recommendation, what do you guys think about about She-Hulk and and really anything, and, uh, all of what we were talking about, all of what we were talking about? I I plan to watch it. Um, my my biggest thing with it is um, I I haven't been listening criticism because i knew some of it was just going to be ridiculous some of it would just be because it was a female hero that right there just automatically makes some people not like it uh, which is ridiculous but i knew i was going to watch it but i haven't yet because nothing i've seen on it or nothing that they showed in the previews really reeled me in it didn't catch my attention but i will watch it I just, just when I don't. Yeah, it's it's not really just something I'm interested in. I think that's it, and it's not a it's not a female lawyer thing or anything like it that. It doesn't have to be. I mean, mm-hmm. number one, I kind of don't like the Hulk, like the the like Bruce Banner. I kind of, I've never really liked him as a character. I don't know. I kind of think he's boring. There is one thing that she does quite a bit that I think you might dig, though. She breaks the fourth wall all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be funny. Yeah. It's pretty Um, funny. It's pretty funny when she does it. I don't know. I'm watching other stuff. And and you know what? That's another point. That's another thing that Mm -hmm. I, I I think we need to consider. There's just so much going on right now. There's so many new shows that how do you keep up with them? I can't you don't. Everything. You don't. You don't keep up with it. That's that's the whole problem. Um, I I have I just still haven't watched Stranger Thing because I'm so far behind. Because I didn't even have I didn't even have Netflix turned on when it came out because there's just too much at one time, and I don't I don't keep all the streaming services on at one time. It's one. Yeah, I, I only watched all. one oh, season God. of Stranger Things. Oh, one season. I loved it. Greg, have you I not really... seen the first season? Sorry, I think I caught you a long time there. Have you not seen the first season of Stranger Things, Greg? Well, I've seen the first. I haven't seen the newest. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm. I, I've seen the first one. Yeah, newest season's pretty cool. That's what everybody says. It I have kind of brings it back. I I think two and three were, you know, it, it's more, which is all I wanted. But well, when you turn yeah. Netflix back on. There's two things you need to watch. I mean, yeah, sure, Stranger Things, but there's two other shows that you should watch that (laughs) blows everything out of the water. Arcane. I need to watch that, yes. Yeah. And Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I need to watch that. And I haven't even seen um, the newest Witcher yet either, so that's on the list. Oh, yeah, well, you know what? The first season was okay. The first season of, of of Witcher was okay, but the second season, fire, fantastic. Is it, is it really good? Oh, it's it's. Were you a fan of the books? I don't read the book. No. Did you did you play the game? I don't like the games. 
Yeah. Just watch it anyway. <laughs> watch I it like, anyway. Watch I it like anyway. I like the first season. Yeah. I liked the first season, but I haven't seen the second. Yeah. Now that I, I, I've, I've tried getting into the games. I might give the third one a try again. Well, the third day. one's about to get a next gen update, so try it. Yeah, then. Yeah, it, it, it's probably <clears> nice <throat> when it's in the new Unreal Engine. Well, yeah, they just announced that they're going to um, release the first one, mm-hmm. or they're gonna they're gonna remake the first one in the Unreal Engine Five. That, that'll be that'll be something impressive yeah, because the first one sucked. <laughs> this whole conversation proves Greg's point earlier on. There's too many things. There's too many things. You can't keep up on it. And then Luke drops four shows on you. <laughs> <laughs> there is too many things. Um, I'm I'm really starting to realize just how many too many things there are. Like, I've decided I actually need to start downsizing some of my gaming hardware because I don't have time for uh, a PC, three consoles, and a VR headset. But speaking okay. of VR, are you going to buy the new Meta? I'm thinking about getting rid of the one I have. <laughs> so I love it, but I don't. It's this it is the thing that's probably the least played because I don't have it. I have to rearrange the house to be able to use it. Okay, it's let's use this. Good let's just use this as a segue. Let's cap this streaming segment. I think we talked about everything we needed to. Let's go ahead and do geek outs. Let's do because we're okay. kind of we're kind of getting there anyway. <laughs> we're kind of getting there anyway. Yeah. So, uh, Greg, go 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 ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I have to go first? Gee. Uh... Okay, I'll go. I'll go. Since yeah, you, you, go, you okay. go first. I gotta think okay. of, I gotta so think of what that my right there. Is. That right there. The boo bucket? The boo bucket? No, no well, yeah. That, that. <laughs> <laughs> I never got one when I was when I was growing up. <gasps> so no. and my wife heard that I had never gotten one when I was growing up. So she went to McDonald's and got me that. She's like, there you that's, go, sweetie. That's a good. That that's a good wife. That's, that's yeah. Nice. She's the best. She's really the best. No, the the thing next to it, the the PSVR. Oh. I love it. But but here's here's the here's the other thing, here's the other thing. The the actual geek out, the actual mm-hmm. geek out. I gave. I, I didn't like it when I first played it. But I gave it a second chance because somebody said how great it was. I wasn't playing it right. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. That game is fantastic. It's fantastic. It is so immersive. Now, the thing that I wasn't doing before. So in the environment, you find like kitchen knives and screwdrivers and stuff. And if you go to try to kill a zombie with that, you get like two stabs out of it and then it's done. You're actually meant to go back to your base with that stuff, break it down in the recycling bin. I didn't really realize that. You break it down in the recycling bin. That gives you the materials that you go out to your crafting bench and craft a shiv. That shiv is much more powerful and doesn't break as easy. However, if you use the shiv and go down through the zombie's skull, it actually breaks easier. You'll maybe get like five or six hits out of it. But if you go through their eye socket where it's squishier, (laughs) it doesn't break as easy. You can get like 20 or 30 out of it. That all being said, the game is extremely immersive I, I really, really like it. I've gone through almost the whole game. And that's that's my geek out. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving my PSVR. And I'm loving Saints and Sinners. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the PSVR 2 isn't like $900. Yeah, I, 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 I've thought of that when, it, when that comes out. Because... The problem I'm having with the quest, one of the things I like about the quest is there was a lot of moving. Mm-hmm. That's the problem I'm having is I don't have the room. And that, that's the thing that I like about the PSVR. They specifically craft their games so that you can do it standing in the same position the whole time. And also that you can play almost all of the games sitting down. 
Some of them you can't. Yeah. Obviously, Gorn and Super Hot, you've got to be at least standing. But like Saints and Sinners, I have not moved. I have a specific spot in my room where I can completely wave my arms around and I won't hit anything. Except my Johnny Bravo, for whatever reason, my little Johnny Bravo figurine. <laughs> I've knocked it down like so many times, it's not even funny. But he's, you know, he's durable. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I definitely, uh, I like it. I'm waiting for um, Immortal, um, uh, Darth Vader Immortal, to go on sale before I get that. So. such a good game that, it is i know i know you've game. you've said that you've said that it is it is so anyway anyway i'm done with mine somebody else go um i finally got around to watching loki mm. uh oh. partly at at luke's urging you know his I'm... Uh, insistence um, but yeah, it was a show that I kind of slept on. I was watching other things at the time. Cause there's too many shows. You know, Cause there's too many shows. So, there's you know, and I, I never got around to Loki. I'm getting around to Loki and, oh man, like I've never been really into the Marvel or DC superhero TV shows. I like the movies and I've tried to watch some of the shows and most of them bore me. Uh, this one, Oh man, it's uh, <laughs> it gets better. Yeah, it, it gets better. It's, it's movie quality. I've only got two episodes left, so you know, um, yeah, this is this is like uh, back to back just MCU movies, right? Um, you know, Tom Hiddleston is and uh, and Owen Wilson. Yeah. I didn't know that Owen Wilson was in this. You know, they just announced that uh, there's going to be a second season of Loki. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. And uh, the the lady Loki, mm -hmm. I don't know the actress's name. Um, but she's think, good. But yeah. But yeah. And um, she's doing a good job. She did a good job portraying a female Loki. Like, that's a difficult. That's a difficult knife's edge to walk but she Without did it just imitating tom hiddleston right she doesn't do that she tried and, to make a know, female loki and i think she did it and you know you'll have to watch the show if you haven't but uh this you know she's not loki she's something other than loki but she, it's it's complicated wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff <laughs> um <laughs> You know, uh, alternate universe stuff. And, you know, Loki is a shape changer anyway. He can look however he wants. Um, but yeah, yeah, Loki is really exciting. It's a mystery show. It's a mystery show. And I, li and I like mystery show. I like mystery shows when they're framed as something else. Like just a, a straight up mystery novel. I don't go for that. I don't go for that. But a superhero mystery story. Yeah. Yeah, I I can do that, and and that's what I like about it. So yeah, two thumbs up, Loki. There was parts of that show that reminded me of. Did you ever play XCOM Declassified? No. That's a good game. It's a good. Really? Uh, that was a very. It wasn't critically acclaimed when it came out, but it kind of became a cult classic. Hmm. I, I would suggest I, like I, would, I would suggest playing that one mm -hmm. now that the controversy is out of it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Try that one. It's a good. It's a good game. But it there were parts of XCOM Declassified that the Loki show reminded me of. So anyway, Loki, Greg. I honestly don't know. I've. Um... I'm playing so many games at the moment and watching to, to so many TV shows at the moment. I'm trying to pick. I'm trying to narrow it down. Uh, um, I mean, I've been seeing some uh, uh, pictures on your feed of some fantastic shots of West Virginia over the last couple oh, months. I did have a really good trip. Maybe that's what I could geek out about. That's I uh, geek out. Yeah. I... Um, 
started, I went, I was in, I think it was 12 or 13 counties in one day. I started in Barber. Yeah, I started in Barber, went to Randolph, had breakfast, went down through Pocahontas County, uh, went, stopped at Lewisburg, went around Lewisburg, got some good pictures of Carnegie Hall. In fact, um, Greenbrier Tourism wanted to use it. I just gave them permission to use it. Hmm. Um, went from there, went down into Summers, went to Hinton, went into Raleigh County, went to Sandstone Falls. Sandstone Falls is really, really fantastic. I highly recommend it, especially in the fall. I, I plan on going back. Backtrack through Hinton, went up the mountain, got on the freeway, then went back in through Beckley, then up through Fayetteville, Summersville, to Flatwoods, then back through Braxton, Gilmer to Lewis to Weston, and then went through Upshur to go back to Barber. So are all of the pictures that I've been seeing like on your feet, are they all from one trip? No, the most recent ones are from either around the house or around work. Most of the trip ones haven't been uploaded. The trip ones would have been uploaded about a week ago. Oh, okay. I, I, I uploaded a few of the falls, and I uploaded uh, one of Carnegie Hall. Um, most of the pictures are sitting on my Canon Rebel still. They haven't been edited. Mm, is that, oh, oh, I didn't know you uh, you were using a Rebel. That makes sense why yeah, but- you're, some of your shots are so good. <laughs> Yeah, the ones that are uploaded at the moment were all taken on the phone, which I do tend to buy the high-end phone just to have the really nice camera. But um, the Rebel pictures haven't been edited and uploaded yet. Well, that's all. That's I mean, you know what? Sometimes when I when I have these have these conversations, you know, it's like. We live in West Virginia, and I don't go in a, out and experience it enough. I'm glad somebody is. <laughs> I'm glad somebody is. There, there's quite a lot to see in such a little state. Yeah, right. There really is. Mm-hmm. I mean, usually the most that I have is go uh, driving 20 minutes away and going seeing uh, Valley Falls or, you know, in the summer going down to Audra. One of these days, one of these days, I want to make it down to Helvetia. That's... That's that's Helvetia a... is fantastic, but you need to go either at Fosnot or the fair if you want a good experience. Okay. okay. Um, and bring cash so you can eat at the restaurant because the restaurant is just oh, the restaurant's so good. At the Hute? Yeah, the Hute is really good. Okay, I didn't know that they didn't take a card, so yeah, I'll make sure to bring cash. Yeah. I mean, I, I I guess I guess out in the middle of nowhere. They they don't take anything other than cash. So the ge- the general store will take a car, but the general store is kind of a bigger operation, and they sell local honey and jam and fees and butter from the honey house. But, uh, yeah, it's from the honey house. They sell it at the general store. Though the honey house is never open. Um, but this but the restaurant is cash or cash only. Now, when is the um when is the museum open? Didn't you say it was like only open on the weekdays or something like that? The um, mu- the masks are in the general store. Mm-hmm. It doubles as the museum. Everything else is closed most of the time unless there's an event going on. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wild and wonderful West Virginia. Wild and wonderful West Virginia. Oh, but if you, if you go to Helvetia, you should make plans to go to the uh, Wildlife Center while you're down there. Okay. Um, to our um, non-West Virginian uh, listeners, we uh, Greg had mentioned that he went down through 13 counties. Um, so, like, Maine only has 16 counties. Um, a lot of states only have, you know, so many counties. Like, Delaware only has three. We have 55. <laughs> yeah. And I think the reason why we have 55 is because we've got so many mountains here that we 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 can't a municipality cannot manage West Virginia unless it's segmented the way it's segmented. My gosh. All so many rivers and mountains and hills and valleys and oh my gosh. Yeah, it's all over the place. So, 
Anyway, um, we are nearing an hour. In fact, I think we passed an hour. So I think we're going to finish this up. Anything else, guys? You want to put a cap on any of this? Any final words for our viewers? No? Okay. All right. That's what I like to gonna, hear. Can we sing Country Roads? No. No. Aww. Aww. Oh. No. <laughs> well, well, I'm you going to after not. this is over. Well, <laughs> I will say that at the end of this show, I will take you home to those country roads to the place. Oh, my God. Where you Luke's, belong. Luke's spoken word version of country roads. This is my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> West Virginia. Mountain Mama. <laughs> Country Roads. Take me home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And on that All note, right. this You're has been crazy. RGC WV Random Geek Culture in West Virginia. I am your host, Luke Hersey, and with me tonight was Alex McLean and Greg Phillips. And uh, we were talking about streaming shows and what the drawbacks are some of the polarizing effects of it and uh maybe studios should take a better look at if they should actually do a streaming show but we also understand why they're doing it they're trying to make money which is the exact reason why movies became a thing so put up or shut up i guess i mean yeah so anyway um if you like this like subscribe um or do the things uh comment tell me how much of a jerk i am um because the algorithm loves interaction as much as you hate me um <clears throat> also um if you uh want to hear more of this you can go back and listen to more of the podcast episodes and stuff uh send me a text message to 304 five six six nine seven 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 or you can send me an email the links are all in the places um you can go to link tree and then it'll direct you to all the other places and all the other places and uh we enjoy you guys listening to this uh we really like putting these on and uh we really like uh you guys giving us feedback so tell us how we're doing welcome to the end Okay. All right. All right.